Hello everybody, Ian Robson here, and welcome back to Manchester. Alright, Premier League's going on today. Felt like I skipped that a little bit. We've got a couple of things going on today. Anyways, uh, let's go ahead and check our crops out. Um, I believe, I'm going to come over here. This is where we planted our oats, I want to say. Oats or canola. No, this is uh, oats or soybeans, I can't remember. I think that is oats. Anyhow, um... As you can see, our nutrients level and our soil level is actually really low. Uh, unfortunately, I don't know what's going on there. And uh, even though it rained the other day in the game, I don't understand why it's so low. And also over here, same issue, 2-2, two, 2-1. Two, two, uh, I guess this um, manure that we spread on here didn't do anything. Or, oh, there's 60% there, strange. Anyway, so what we're going to do is going to go ahead and spray... Uh, a little bit of fertilizer here. We have NPK already lined up here. So we're going to go ahead and spray that on our crops. Uh, all of them, I think. Because uh, we don't have... Uh, can't really do much else. Uh, well, we can progress time, I suppose. That's not what I mean. I mean more... It's uh, If I don't do this right now, we're going to run into problems, basically. And get a terrible yield. So as you can see, I have tram lines already on this particular field, and that was due to the fact that uh, I sprayed, I think it was herbicide before, or something like that, I want to say. Are they totally out, folded out? Yes, nope. All right, perfect. Let's do this. I'm going to try and do this manually this time. Uh, luckily, we do have the tram line, so I can kind of follow relatively easily, at least. Uh, I suppose in real life, you wouldn't really need to use... Uh, well, I guess you, you, you end up making them. Whoa, what did I hit there? Uh, you end up... Why is it going on? What am I just... Ah, uh, gonna make a mess of my field if I don't... If I'm not careful. Anyways, uh, so yeah, we'll spray this NPK down. Hopefully that'll bring up the nutrient level. And it should bring up the moisture level a little bit as well. Uh, which is good because if we don't uh, bring up the moisture level, you could run into problems as well. And I think this is all due to the fact that I... Uh, accidentally reset this map uh, when I ins when I loaded up the map without soil mod then loaded it with soil mod so it can happen from time to time all right here we are nice easy turn I don't think it was quite that nice when I did it last time as you can see we do have weeds popping up here so I don't know how bad it's gonna be uh, when it's all said and done Hopefully it's not too bad, but you really never know because uh, it looks, I don't know, it could be bad. It doesn't It's hard to tell actually if you're, it, the color change isn't that significant, so it's really difficult to, see, to say whether you actually are um, <laughs> spraying or not. Uh, for those people wondering how I created these tram lines, of course that was done with the drive control mod with the wither wheels module that's how you end up uh, creating these types of tram lines and whatnot and that is from once again the drive control mod so that is what's creating these lines when I drive through the crop like this perfect so you can do it however you like um, but that's how these ones were created at least with that specifically. Uh, I think there are some other ways you can do it as well. Uh, there is a uh, another mod you can use that which like I think it like plows the ground or something like that. I think that's how it's done at least and uh, it will do the same sort of idea but instead of it being just run over like this is technically it's more like a cultivated type of land. Perfect. Done in the first field. This is good for us. Didn't use very much. This is good. All right. Perfect. Let's fold that in. And we'll go to the next field. I think that one needs to be sprayed as well. Uh, while this is folding up, let's just quick, a quick little jaunt over there and double check that. I'm fairly certain it does. Four and two, 14, yeah. It needs moisture at the very least, so. We'll have to take care of that as well. 
I'm back over here. Yeah, we'll definitely look at all the weeds in there. It's crazy. All right, so this shouldn't take too long either. Uh, lucky for us, probably could have left it unfolded. And I think, uh, how shall we do this? What field is this? I think what I'll do is I'll use course play for this one, so I can work on something else real quick. Uh, this field is field number three. Starting corner southwest, heading north with a headland. Uh, after, I guess, we'll do. And set it up so it's the first point. Sorry, car. There we go. Anyways, um, we have our cows and we, what we're going to do is uh, we're going to we need to make some TMR uh, because our cows are TMR less still uh, when I switched over to the new map version of the map I had TMR for the cows before but of course what happened is once you uh, switch over to a new map uh, you basically lose all your information for example your TMR and whatnot so what we're going to try and do is uh, make some TMR for our cows now we have potatoes, and we have, I guess what's this, oats and soybeans. Yeah, oats and soybeans. So what we're gonna try and do is uh, deal with the situation. Now, is there anything actually planted? No, it's all withered, okay. So we'll have to uh, deal with that accordingly. And I don't think there are any grass fields. Actually, there are right there. Hmm. Maybe what we can do then is, uh, where is, We'll do is this. We will rent a forge harvester for an hour, two hours. No, we won't do it right now because if we try to do it right now, it'll just run into problems basically. Um, what I was going to do is hire, I don't think we actually even have a forge harvester. I remember having one, but obviously I don't. No, I did switch out the uh, the other Fent, oops, two, here it is, uh, this is another 939, this is a uh, same, same model, same amount of horsepower and everything, uh, the only difference is, is that, uh, this one is, um, just a different model, uh, it has the same sort of functions where it has, like, you move forward, the joystick moves forward, back, moves back, um, this also has uh, the ability to open and close the door. I think it's X, is it? No. R. So you can also open and close the door. And I think there are, some, you can mess around with some other things, I think, too. Is it fenders? Well, maybe that's it. I thought there was one other, a couple other things you could mess around with, but maybe it's only the door. Anyways, but you have that function, and I don't think there's any IC in here. Oh, no, there is. So you can have the door. Uh, open the roof and the back window I suppose and that's it nothing too crazy uh, but it is a nice it's a nicer tractor so let me give you an example what I mean by it. it's a nicer tractor so it doesn't uh, it shows you your speed and your your RPMs and everything down on the console and it doesn't flicker which is what I was looking for um, it's a much nicer well it's the same basically the same tractor slight differences but uh, this one's just nicer to drive on the inside unfortunately mirrors don't work and that's just due to this map nothing else uh, no no mods or anything like that just the map itself has that weird uh, feature for whatever reason so yeah very nice little uh, very nice little tractor if you ask me does uh, 62 kilometers an hour which is pretty fast not quite as fast as the JCB uh, but it's nice. I think it has just a, this one has 390 horsepower and I think the biggest Jeep JCB has, oh, how much is it? I think it's, uh, 400, no, 300 and, well, let's find out. Let's do it this way. This is the easiest way of doing it. 310. So this has got 80 horsepower or more and a little bit slower, but not by much. I think the other ones, the other ones do, I think it's a, uh, how much is it? 70 clicks, and these ones only do 60, so pretty quick. I'm not sure if these ones actually do 60 or 70 in real life, but uh, they do 
work fairly well. One thing I noticed, uh, if anybody else ever noticed this, but you can actually lower the step ladder here. I don't know if that allows you to actually walk up. It'd be kind of cool if you did, but it's just a neat little feature. And I think there's something at the back you can do too. Oh no, maybe that's what I'm thinking of. But cool little feature about this trailer. This is the Randazzo by uh, Ego Modding or a Ago, however you want to say it. So kind of a neat little function. Let's check on that sprayer. He's doing uh, second last pass. All right, so we will come back when this guy is finished. All right, just finished up spraying that field right there. And now we are heading to the last field, which is, where is it here? Uh, field number seven, I guess it would be, which is just south of us here. So let's go ahead and head over there getting cab here so we can actually see what we're doing a bit better it's only a slight ditch there right anyways it's funny I've never seen uh, I don't know if this is a common brand uh, this type of sprayer uh, in England because this is uh, the only uh, this is the only one I've ever seen like it uh, in this game I've never seen this in real life although where I live uh, in Ontario, Canada here, uh, we see uh, the Rogators and uh, we also see the Terrigator, I think it's called. Uh, we tend to see those two. Uh, actually, what we'll do is I'll do the far side first. Uh, we tend to see those two most often. Uh, there are some other ones, but uh, those ones I've seen. Uh, Case Patriots I've seen, and I've seen a couple of John Deere ones as well. They all, uh, it all depends where you are and what's prominent in that particular area. They all have their pros and cons. Actually, New Holland has a, an interesting system for their sprayers. Uh, they actually have the boom arms on the front, not the back, uh, which is very different. And as far as I remember, uh, the reason for that is, uh, the reason for that is to, we'll stay in this line here. Uh, the reason for that is to increase visibility of where your booms are going, basically. So to try and avoid things like accidents and whatnot. That's the idea, at least. So it'd be curious to see whether or not that actually is the case or not. I have no idea. But um, as far as I know, that's what it's supposed to do. So it's kind of cool. Uh, I know there's lots of Case Patriots out there. Apparently, the standard size now for booms is becoming like 120 feet. Uh, even even like in smaller areas now, we have to go around this thing. Uh, even in smaller areas, 120 is becoming like the norm. As far as I know, Ooh, is that close? I can't tell. I have no idea. I think that actually went right through it. I'm not certain of that actually. Uh, that's one of the downfalls. It is drive throughable, mind you. You don't actually have to avoid it at all. I just uh, felt like avoiding it. I've done that a couple times where uh, I've driven as if I've been avoiding something even though I really don't have to. Okay, make a little turn here. And turn those guys back on. Yeah, it's kind of funny. Um, I don't know why that's becoming the norm. I guess because farms are getting larger and larger these days. And uh, 120 feet is just becoming what you need in order to stay competitive, perhaps. I don't know. Uh, just the way farming's going these days. Bigger and bigger and better, I guess. Uh, whether that's a bad thing or a good thing, I don't know. It could be taken both ways, really. It's a good way in the sense that technology is improving, but uh, in a bad way, it means that you need to be more. Um, You can't tinker with your tractors and vehicles quite as much because you can't, you're not allowed to in a lot of cases because you don't own the software, for example, uh, but you own the vehicle technically. I don't know. I had a conversation about this not too long ago with, uh, with my father-in-law about how uh, even some of the older tractors are going for still a fair bit of money uh, because it's just not worth investing always in the newer tractors because you um, don't really own the tractor per se. Or, well, you do, but you, and you don't. So, 
I don't know. I, I must have sprayed liquid manure here, but I, I don't I didn't see the effect. And I think what happened was I sprayed it, I loaded the other version of the map by accident, and then I loaded this version back up again. And because of that, it just didn't take effect, or the effect was, you know, lost on it, unfortunately. A lot of weeds in this field, actually. Maybe we'll have to spray this field for um, for weed control. Jeez. A lot more than I'd like there to be. Uh, I think, I don't know what growth stage we're at here. Uh, technically, the potatoes are ready to be... Um, if I, I don't know if you can whole crop those. Uh, let's just check real quick. No, I didn't think so. That would be a little strange if you could whole crop potatoes. You can with almost every other uh, standard in-game fruit, but not with potatoes apparently. So, One of the cool things that you, it would be interesting to see if you could do in this game was to uh, bale soybean stalks. Uh, I know you can you can do it in real life. and uh, It's hard on the machine. And you can bale... Um, corn stalks as well but uh, neither of those are done very often just due to the fact that uh, it's really rough on your equipment as far as I understand so for example bailing corn stalks can be just atrocious uh, when it comes to like how your vehicle handles it and whatnot so all right this is the last pass here and then we're done with this field as well one of the advantages of course of having a uh, 40 meter boom really makes a big difference when you need to get a field done. Uh, even the big field I don't think took very long. Uh, I don't know, maybe five minutes, something like that. Maybe more. I have no idea. I didn't count. But this and the Amazon Pantera basically are two, uh, probably your best options for self-propelled sprayers. There is a nice John Deere uh, trailer, trailed version, uh, which is nice, but uh, I still prefer the self-propelled propelled ones for whatever reason more versatility means you don't need to have an extra tractor to run the sprayer as, as well as everything else. That's just my point of view though. Everyone's got a different point of view. Perfect. Alright. Wait for that to un... or fold up I should say. And uh, it looks like these two would be ready to be... Oh, we have field number four. What did I plant in field number four? Oh, I planted corn. Oh. oh. I totally forgot I did that. And it's actually ready to be... Uh, it's actually ready to be uh, chopped right now, actually, in the silage. Huh. Didn't even see that. That's kind of funny, actually. Alright. Uh, let's just get in cab here for a second. And we'll park this... Uh, I almost called it an Eagle Vista, which is an old, like, car. It's a Night Vista, they call it, in this game. There we go. Go on the bumpy road here. This one... <laughs> this always throws me off how bumpy this road is. This reminds me, I think this is like the road in the... on the Chellington map is the same idea, really. Uh, I think this one's... this one's a bit better than that one, but... it's the way it works. All right, so what I'll do is I'll park this up, and I think what we'll do is we'll grab ourselves a forge harvester, and we'll be back in a second. All right, just parked up the vista right there, the night vista, and uh, we're gonna go ahead and get a forge harvester roll in here. I don't know if we even have one. I'll double check that. I suppose we could rent one if all else fails. I guess the fastest and easiest way to do it is like this. We can plant corn, we can harvest corn. Actually, no, we can't even harvest corn, that's funny. All right, so what we'll do is uh, we'll rent a forge harvester, we'll rent the New Holland one, and we'll rent this for, I don't know, three hours is fine. That's good. And we'll use the New Holland header, like so. Excellent. And we'll ask them to deliver. There we go. Excellent. And they're right in front of us there, which is good. Uh, so what we'll do is we will... Uh, I have to remember what the ratio is now to make TMR in the bunker. I want to say it's 40-60. I think that's what it is. Uh, which side is the... Pit? Oh, it's, I think we're on the... Yeah, good. 
I was like, I think this is the right side. Not sure. There we go. This is good. I don't think I've used this. Uh, this header actually provides you with quite a bit of visibility, even though it's folded up and ready to go. So, uh, let me just explain why this corn doesn't look like, doesn't look like it's ready, when in fact it actually is. Uh, so the way one of the mods I have installed is the green, uh, not the green fertilizer, um, the Grünheckel mod, I think it's called. Uh, basically, what that means is uh, if I go into this screen right here, so yeah, ah, there's this extra growing phase. This is like when you can, when you can technically uh, harvest it for silage uh, because it's green. Because of course, it's a little bit different when you're harvesting or uh, making silage out of something versus. Um, harvesting it for seed and whatnot. So, what we need to take in consideration is, should I hire this guy or should I? I think what I'll do is I'll grab the fent, which is right here, and I'll set this guy up. And I believe this can take, I believe this can take uh, silage, I don't, or not silage. It should be able to take everything, basically. And let's do set it up to its manual search. The new Holland. Uh, no, it's uh, what's the number? There it is. And what I'll do is I'll set it up so it doesn't drive on the crop, or I, I should it should be able to do it without it, but so what we'll do is we'll start the course right here. One, two. And I'm just going to drive over this right here, or around this, I should say, just so they get some, just so they can get some fuel. And uh, I'm going to drive this up over here. Uh, now I do have the BGA extension and the BGA mod, so what I have to take into consideration is I need to actually compact each layer down. That should be fine. I need to compact each layer down or else it won't ferment properly, which is a bit unfortunate, but that's the way it works. So I'll have to take that consideration when using this, because if I don't do that, uh, it actually won't ferment properly, which is unfortunate, but that's the way it works. All right, that should be good right there. I'll just pop it into the field a little bit here. There we go. And we'll call this F4. Uh, da, 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 forge. Alright, no combine in reach, that's fine. This guy's not running yet. And I will grab the case quad track and I'll put him just around the corner here, ready to compact the silage because it does need to get compacted on each level. There we go. He's just prepped and ready to go. Excellent. And let me check my numbers for what we need. I actually wrote this down. Uh, last time I was talking to Farmer Beavis, I was like, so, what is the numbers for silage, or for, how do you make TMR? Because I, I don't know how many times I've asked him. Too many times. Um, honestly, too many times. So I wrote it down. 60% uh, chaff, okay. 40% taters. Sounds like a plan. Alright, this guy's probably ready to go. The combine is not doing anything. Probably why it's telling him to stop. Excellent, let's unfold the header. There we go, and we'll turn around here. And what we'll do is we'll do a little strip right down the middle here, just to get us started. Helps if you put the pipe up, of course. Now this should work, fingers crossed. Yes, excellent. And is this actually picking up stuff? It is good. Okay. Let's do this. There we go. So as you can see, um, you need to be at a certain level. Uh, you need to be at a certain growth phase for this to work properly, of course. And uh, that's due to the mod. 
uh, that I mentioned before. The, I think it's called Grun, Grunheckel mod. So, I like harvesting, so that's the reason why I'm harvesting instead of uh, unloading, because I'm pretty bad at it. Actually, I guess nowadays it's not so hard with the uh, with the uh, drive control mod, I suppose. It's a little bit easier than it used to be. So, probably not getting uh, as good as yield as we possibly could. But uh, that's okay, we'll have to deal with that. I'm just gonna leave the HUD up so I can see how full that trailer is. It's at 30%. So yeah, we probably could have done a little bit better like this. Better than this, and that's, like I said, due to the fact that uh, our nutrients and all that aren't uh, up to snuff. Not too bad. I'm just following this little line right here. I think that's why I'm actually staying straight. I don't know if that is actually uh, a straight line or not, but it looks straight enough to me, so that's what we're going with at least. Perfect. So he's at 40%. Oh, that's not too bad, actually. I thought I was going to be a little bit... Uh, I thought that was going to be a little bit better than that, but... And uh, let's raise the head. Make a nice little turn here. And I think what it'll do is it'll take the right side up here. Because I have a sneaky suspicion that uh, he's going to come up on the left. Yeah. What a sneaky suspicion. So there you go. That's not too bad at all. Unfortunately, the first pass he was driving right through the crops, but uh, now it's not so bad. Let's get lined up here properly. There we go. It's not too bad, actually. With the corn, because you, you have like a line you can just follow, it's really easy in comparison to other crops. Uh, I guess potatoes aren't too bad either because you can do the same thing with potatoes or sugar beets because they get planted in rows like this. And uh, it's easy to follow, I suppose. But with wheat and soybeans, it's not quite as easy. Um, it's not quite as visible, I should say. It is easy, same idea, but just not as visible. And this, you can really see the lines here really easily, so. Excellent. All right, let's see how, how this works. Uh, I guess what we'll have to do is, I don't know how it's going to work actually. I don't know how this, uh, hmm, this is going to be interesting because what's going to happen is our silage is going to be done, or I should say our corn chaff is going to be ready before our potatoes are ready. I don't think we have potatoes in storage. Uh, let's see here, do we have potatoes in storage? Soybeans in storage, but not potatoes, okay. So. We'll see how that goes. Whoops, missing some now. Oh, stop, stop, stop. Don't want to waste any. We're not getting a crazy high yield, so. We can just turn this off while we're waiting. How is the fence slipping? What's it slipping on? What is he doing? Well, I guess this is one reason why I could be driving. There's always something, really. Nice thing about these trailers, they do hold 35,000 liters, which is really nice. Uh, very versatile, which I like. Alright, let's see how this works. Drive to nearest point. Is it gonna... No, it's not gonna do what I want it to do. Anyways. Manually it is. Not a problem. Alright, so here's our nice bunker here and uh, one of the best things you can do is try and evenly why is that the silage that's unfortunate that should be fixed anyways uh, like I was saying it is the uh, to try and evenly distribute is probably your best bet because that allows that really makes it a lot easier to uh, to compact if you can at least it's not as simple as that all the time but uh, bring up the information so there's your fill level compact level so it's all about trying to evenly distribute it as best as possible and as you saw before there was a little bit of uh, there's a certain amount of time where you can only uh, it seems like there's only a certain trigger point I should say is what I'm thinking of and then it stops. 
I'm just gonna finish unloading right, I think, as best as I can, right in the middle, maybe. That'll probably be best. There we go. Excellent. And then we'll drive back to the field and set the sky on his way again. And they'll have to come back with the case quad track and make sure that's compact or else that's not going to ferment properly. I could use that right there, but it's not as much fun. Alright. There we go. Perfect. So I think what I'll do is I'll continue doing silage for a little bit, or yeah, maybe we'll come back next episode, I think, is what we'll do, and we'll finish this off. Um, yeah, I think that's what we'll do. Anyways, folks, that'll be it for me for today. My name's Ian Robson. This has been Farming Simulator 2015, coming at you from Manchester. And if you enjoyed yourself, why don't you go ahead and hit that share button? I really appreciate that. Catch you guys later.